Daddy, take a picture of me. Sweet, I would love to take your picture. But Daddy, why can't I see the picture you took now? I'm sorry, that, that doesn't exist what you're talking about. But wait. I can make it happen. Today we're talking about the chemistry of instant film, also sometimes colloquially known as Polaroids, even though Polaroid isn't the only company that makes instant film cameras. This started because my mom just gifted us her Fujifilm Instax instant camera that she wasn't using anymore, and she had some film that went along with it, and I started to wonder, how on earth does this work? I know how to develop film in a dark room, but how does all of that chemistry happen inside this tiny little camera in about a minute? And I realized that this packet of film contains more chemistry than I could have ever imagined. So before we get into that science, let's roll back a little bit and talk about the history of the Polaroid and instant film inventor, Edwin Land. Now, for the record, Edwin Land did not have a mustache, but drawing a mustache on my face is a fun activity to do, so. Edwin Land was an interesting character. Uh, when he went away to go study school, he started his freshman year at Harvard University, studying physics and optics, but went, meh, this college life, it ain't for me. Let's drop out and invent something. So he moved to New York City, started secretly working at Columbia University Labs at night, independ and independently studied optics at the New York City Public Library. All of this secret work and independent study led to the invention of the synthetic polarizer. Polarizer as in polarized sunglasses, which help block out light by filtering out certain orientations of light waves. Up until this point, polarizers had to be from made from natural materials and were not cheap to synthesize. Edwin Land's synthetic polarizer was cheap. Edwin Land, along with a co-worker, started the Land Wheelwright Labs, which manufactured and sold these inexpensive polarizing sheets. Eventually, it became the Polaroid Company in 1937, named for the polarizers they were making. Then along came 1943, and as I so beautifully and artistically demonstrated in the very beginning of this video, Land's daughter asked, Hey Dad, why can't I see the picture that you just took of me with your camera? And this started Lance's brain spinning. And it took less than five years from that moment to create the first Polaroid camera that shot in black and white. However, later on, when the Polaroid company would go on to try to take color photographs, it would take 15 years to figure out the color chemistry to get an instant color photo. I think from less than five years for the whole camera and film system to like full 15 years just for color photography is crazy to me. Anyhow, Edwin Land had to overcome a lot of obstacles with trying to develop instant film. So I've talked a lot about and I've created several videos on developing normal film, so you should go back and watch those for a more in-depth explanation. So I'll give a brief overview of the basic chemistry of film here. So the basic chemistry of film involves film covered in a emulsion that is made out of silver halide crystals, which are light sensitive. When you take a picture, those silver halide crystals are exposed to light. And when you develop that image, those silver halide crystals exposed to light get converted into metallic silver and start to form the image. In addition to a developer chemical, you also need something that will stop the development process from occurring. And then finally, something that will fix the image and stop the film from being light sensitive anymore so you can have your final negative image. All of this took several steps required the use of a dark room where no light could get in, and usually some sort of professional technician, unless you're trying to do it yourself at home, which would be hard. So this required you sending your film into a lab and usually waiting for several days for the turnaround period. So Edwin Land had to figure out how to take all of that chemistry, put it into a packet, get it all to work out, and keep it shelf stable. And he did, thus bypassing all of those steps in a normal dark room. Sorry there. <laughs> so Polaroid had to figure out how to take all of that chemistry in typical film development and put it into one sheet of film. And this is the structure of that film. So you have your base layer um, that you build upon, just how conventional film has an acetate backing. And then you have to have your light sensitive layer 
a silver halide emulsion. On top of that, you would have your color light sensitive layers. So something sensitive to red light, green light, and blue light. And each of those would contain the correct dyes you need to convert them to their complementary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow. Because color film builds on complementary colors to form your final color image. And then comes the different chemical components. So you have your developer to develop your image. You have an acid layer to help stop that development. And you also have a timing layer to make sure all of that chemistry goes okay. And then finally, something called an opacifier. An opacifier makes things opaque or cloudy so you can't see through them. And the main purpose of these opacifiers is to prevent your Polaroid film from being exposed to light before the image can fully be developed. So that's the basic structure of film, of Polaroid film. So when I take a picture, the shutter opens exposing the film to light and my little film roll comes out of here. As the film comes out of the camera, it goes through a roller and that's when the development process begins. So the alkaline developer starts to distribute over that film and it converts all of that exposed silver halide emulsion into metallic silver. Furthermore, it also releases the dye molecules in each layer to start to rise up, get attached to those metallic silver areas, and start to form our color image. At the same time, after the development has occurred, we have an acid layer coming in. Acids neutralize bases, and since our developer is a base, the acid helps to neutralize that and stop the development process at the right time. It also reacts with those opacifiers to allow it to start to become clear. And as it clears up, that's when you get to see your image. So let's take a look. And bam, here's my image in a relatively short period of time. And when you're actually watching the image come up before your eyes, let me see if you can see that. You're not watching the development process occur, but you're watching those opacifiers become clear and reveal your developed image underneath. I feel like a lot of us don't really think about the true like magic science that is going on in these little cameras. And after learning about how Polaroid film and instant film works, I am amazed that it works. I mean, in less than 60 seconds, I have a tangible photo that I am holding that developed. I can't believe the chemistry works. I can't believe the timing works. I can't believe it like is all inside of this tiny little device. I mean, this is, it's amazing. It is magic, it is science. This is practically, just, this is a miniature chemistry lab that you just carry around with you on the go. Ooh, you know what? It needs, it needs a sticker now. This is a portable chemistry lab. Hold on, hold on one sec. <laughs> Let's see. So, portable, portable. Ah, what is it with small devices that just print their own objects that is so, so good? Portable chemistry lab. Heck yeah, man. There you go, officially a portable chemistry lab, which probably opens this up to, you know, having to get yearly safety inspections. Oh well. I hope you enjoyed learning about instant film chemistry, at least like 50% as much as I did, because I really enjoyed it. So thank you all so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check out my other chemistry photography videos, because I do have, I have an entire playlist called photography, so there's a good number to go watch. Uh, follow me on Instagram and as always, keep it sciencey.